Alright, so this is the difference between the dynamic lighting on the left and normal default writing on the right. And it's it, it's it's very subtle the way that I have it tuned in. But it's it looks so it adds just a little bit more immersion to to the broadcast and I wanna I wanna record a video and show you guys how to do this. Cause just that's so cool. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to T Queen OS. I'm your host, Cassie Joy, and today we're going to be talking about how to make your VTuber setup more immersive by adding dynamic lighting that reflects the on screen elements on your avatar as if it was in the environment itself. We're going to go over two solutions to do this for both 3D and 2D VTubing since they require different solutions. Both of these tools and workarounds were made by members of the community, and I'll be linking their respective Twitters below so you can go support them. Before all that, consider clicking like and subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of content because I've got a lot lined up over the next couple months, including my 3D VTuber Masterclass. Soon. TM. Our first tool is from Ooz, Oz, at Oozykins over on Twitter. It's called VTube Reflect. Basically, you're just adding RTX to your VTuber model. It's a simple tool that they've released over on their itch.io and is a pay what you want asset. So if you find it useful, consider tossing five bucks or something their way to support someone making these really cool free tools for the community. A few notes I wanna make before going over this tool is one, this assumes that you're using VC face for your model already. And that's what I'm gonna be using in today's video. But as long as your software has a VMC output, you should be good to go. Two, if you're using the .vsf avatar format like me, you will need a VRM that's set up with the same configuration. You might find this bothersome if you use dynamic bones or similar components rather than spring bones for your avatar's dynamics motion. All right, head over to the itch.io, linked in the video description, and download that zip and pop it open. Go ahead and drop this wherever you store your thousands of VTuber accessory apps that you wish you could just easily combine into one app. Go ahead and open up that folder. Before you doing anything else, we need to install the Unity Capture plugin for OBS that's included in the Unity Capture Installer folder. Make sure your OBS is closed and it should be as simple as running the install batch script that's included in that folder. If at any point you ever want to uninstall this plugin for some reason, there's a script for that too. Next thing you're going to want to do is open up VC Face. Load up your avatar like normal and we're going to head into the general settings. Scroll down until you find the OSC slash VMC protocol section. You may be familiar with this if you're using the iPhone face tracking already, but this is a bit different. Instead of receiving the data, we're gonna wanna check the box that says send data with OSC slash VMC protocol. And that's it. In VC face, just leave it open in the background as if you were doing your normal VTubing streams. Now we get to open up VTube Reflect. You'll be presented with a rather simple inf interface, monitor in with the following settings of monitor index, which is the monitor's context reflected on the avatar, the monitor control, which is like the gain on the reflection. I would leave that at one or lower. And then ambient is how much is reflected. Bloom is well, bloom. The first thing you wanna do is click the load avatar button, find your .vrm file and load it up. If you did everything properly, you should be moving in the preview win window just like you are in VC phase. If not, the most likely problem you're having is the networking port out of VC phase is getting congested and not working properly. There is a very simple fix to this though. Close down VTube Reflect and go back to the general settings within VC Face. Uh, change the port underneath your send data settings up by whatever. I changed mine from the default 39 to 40, but do whatever works on your network. Next, go back to the folder where you keep VTube Reflect, open up the settings underscore avatar text file and change the VMC port to the one that you changed it to in VC Face. Save the file and reopen Reflect. Now you should be tracking and reflecting. You can start setting up the desired effect and positioning of your avatar in its like desired location in the viewpoint. Be sure to click apply when you're happy with this positioning so that it applies on the output. Finally, we can head over to OBS. We're gonna want to make a video capture device source wherever you usually put your avatar. In this device, we're gonna select the Unity Video Capture, set the resolution to custom, and then 1920 by 1080. Next, go to Video Format and select ARGB. Now you're good to go. Use this as your video capture for, source for your model for right now, from now on and enjoy immersive lighting. The next Beth is a little bit more involved, but it'll allow for more than just 3D VTubers to use it. I've seen people with traditional face, cam face cams even using this trick. This one is brought to you by Graves or at virtual underscore Graves over on Twitter, who has made add-ons for 2D VTubers in the past, like his Splood controller prop. The next technique doesn't require additional software to run on so long, 
OBS or your VTuber software. And this makes it just so much more accessible unless you use, unless you use it whether or not you're 2D, 3D, or even use an IRL face cam. All you need for this to work is an OBS plugin called Stream Effects. If you use Streamlabs OBS, you can't do this trick. Stream Effects does a lot, and you should really read the documentation if you're interested in it. And maybe I'll do a video on it in the future, but let's focus on this particular effect right now. Make sure OBS is closed and run the installer, then open it back up. And then the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is right click, make a source mirror the game capture or your monitor capture. After that's done, let's go to the filters. You're gonna to wanna to add a blur filter to it and set it to dual filtering and set the size to nine. Now you can close that window, drag the source to the bottom of the source stack and hide it. Now you're gonna to go to your avatar source or the folder containing it uh, if you use uh, several props on screen or other on screen effects with your avatar and open up the filters for that. Now add a dynamic mask filter and set the input source to the source mirror that we just created. All right, we're almost done. Set the base value for red, green, and blue all to zero. After that, go to each channel and set the respective color to two. So red's red channel should be at two, green's green channel, and blue's blue channel. Now you should have a nice reactive avatar face cam or whatever, I even use it on my background. If you find the effect too intense, that's okay. It's actually super easy to adjust. Let me explain what's actually happening here. The base value on each color is the setting for the minimum brightness of the model. And the input value is acting as a maximum for the effect coming through on the background source. The closer you bring these values back to their defaults, the more the subtle the effect is gonna be. I found that setting the base value to 0.2 and the input values down to 1.0 gave a real satisfying effect that didn't get blown out in the bright scenes, but it didn't get erased in dark scenes. But play around with it to your heart's content. Another thing that you could do if you're having issues with it being blown out is adding a color correction filter to your VTuber source and turning down the exposure or the brightness. Another cool trick that Virtual Graves came up with that I think is uh, really neat in particular for like my avatar or someone with really bright eyes for their avatar is you can make the avatar's eyes glow and it's really easy. Go into your VTuber source and copy the filter for this dynamic mass. Next, you're gonna make a, another source mirror and this time you're gonna make it of your VTubing source. Open up the filters for that, add a chroma key and set it to whatever the color your, of your eyes are and play around with that until you're happy. And then add the dynamic mask into that source, leaving the original source unfiltered. Now all you have to do is stack these perfectly on top of each other and you should get a nice glowing eye effect coming through or whatever part of your avatar you want. This only works obviously if your avatar's eyes don't match anything else on your avatar, which works great for my standard fox girl model because I have the green eyes and there's no green on anywhere else on here. It doesn't work with my Okami model who has gray eyes and wears a lot of gray. Depending on character lore or setting or whatever you're doing, this can make your character, your avatar pop a lot. What does everyone think? Gonna use this going forward? I think it has some very situational uses or if you make it very subtle, it's just a little bit of extra flavor of motion to your stream. Let me know in the comments below or consider dropping by our community discord, which is linked in the video description. I will see you guys all in the next one with more tips and tricks for content creators, so be sure to subscribe. Now, if you don't mind me, I have to go stop some maniacal gambling robot overlord from taking over the Mojave Wasteland. Peace out. Alright, hey Siri. Set a timer for 10 minutes. I can do this. I was a Minecraft streamer.